welcome to our solar electric trailer journey. We're so glad you've joined us today. In this episode, we will be talking about how to save time and money on a road trip when you're using your EV. Yeah, our, our tip today is a little bit counterintuitive and frankly won't always work, but, but stay with us until the end so you can appreciate when you can take advantage of this nuance to have a quicker, more enjoyable road trip. The rate at which an EV battery charges slows down as it fills up. It's kind of like going into a movie theater. When you first go in, when you first go into an empty theater, you can find any seat you want and you can find it quickly. You go into a theater that's sort of full of people, you can still find that good seat, but it takes a little bit longer and it gets a little bit trickier. When you walk into a theater that's nearly full, it really slows you down to find the seat that you want or need. So electrons charging a battery seem to experience this same issue. Yeah, so that, that's a good explanation, hon. Thanks for sharing that. The, uh, I don't really understand the physics, but, but it's clear from our experience and from everything we read that in fact the charging of an EV battery slows as it gets closer to full. And that slowing begins in most cars around half full. So our Bolt, for instance, will charge twice as fast from 20 to 50 percent mm -hmm. mm -hmm. as it does from 50 to 80 percent, even though in each case it's just 30 percent of the battery. So our strategy for a road trip is just to take more charging stops. Yeah, so we take uh, more frequent, shorter uh, charging stops rather than uh, infrequent or less frequent, uh, longer charging stops. And that makes for a little bit of a faster trip and we'll get into it, but can you actually save money too? But the optimal strategy we want you to remember depends on several factors. Yeah, so one is how fast your car charges. And if your car charges really fast and you have fast chargers available on your route, very fast chargers, over a hundred kilowatt rate chargers, then you probably can't save enough time to worry about and you should just charge whatever uh, fits your route the best. And of course, if there aren't chargers where you want them and if there isn't a charger at your destination, so you need more power to, to actually have juice when you're at your destination, all kinds of things factor in, including your meal plan. <laughs> so, you know, be careful not to use this concept too strictly. And frankly, don't forget those bathroom breaks that are so important. Devin likes to drink Diet Coke when we travel because it keeps him awake so that we don't get into an accident, which is a good thing to do. Yeah. But that makes us stopping every 60 to 90 minutes. Yeah, so, you know, we, we ch end up stopping more often than we stop to charge. That is, <laughs> even though we yeah. like to take, you know, quick charges and frequent charges, we are still stopping more often than that for restroom breaks. And so uh, we are never stopping unnecessarily just to, to charge. We always have something else to do, even if it's just yeah. a potty stop. Yeah. Your intuition right now is probably telling you, no, 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 no. I want to minimize my stops. I don't want to stop more often. But in fact, that might not be the fastest way to go. You have to realize that sometimes three stops is faster than two. Yeah, so let's just use a, a simple example, a little bit of math here. If you need 40 kilowatt hours to get to your destination of electricity, and uh, you could get that in one stop, charging for about 60 minutes uh, with our car, and uh, in two stops though, we could get that same electricity in 40 minutes. So that 20 minute difference is enough to justify the extra stop. And charging faster sometimes even saves you money. Yeah, some chargers, uh, and it varies. You know, like Electrify America will charge on a per kilowatt hour rate sometimes, and sometimes they'll charge on a per minute basis, uh, depending on the location and the regulations in those locations. So when they're charging, when, when anyone charges you on a per minute basis, it likely makes sense to do more fast charges than uh, to do fewer and charge longer each time. And that's because as your charging slows, you're paying more per kilowatt hour. So uh, you wanna get all of your charging near empty if possible. 
So let's just use our bolt as an example. Yeah, so in our bolt, uh, we can get uh, at about 20 kilowatt hours in about 20 minutes when the car is near empty. But uh, it'll take 40 minutes as it approaches 80%. So uh, it really it takes about twice as long uh, as it approaches the 80%. And so we're in a per minute billing situation, we're mm -hmm. paying twice as much for the same electricity yeah. uh, if we're yeah. uh, filling a half full battery. Charging frequently won't always work, so don't get caught up on this advice. Just remember that minimizing the, the stops may not make the trip even faster. But one thing you do have to keep in mind is always, always, always please have some cushion in your battery so you don't get stuck out in the middle of nowhere with no way to charge it. Yeah, you have to be careful. And one thing to keep in mind is that as you're charging, you can check the status of the next charger on your route on a road trip. Typically with an app like the Electrify America app, you can see uh, whether the uh, charger is in service and whether it is in use. And you might decide based on those factors not to proceed and to wait and continue charging at the charger where you are at that moment. Yeah. So these are our tips from, for an, an EV road trip on how to save some money and save time. We'd love to hear from you. What are your EV road trip travel tips that you can share with us? We'd certainly love to hear them. We can learn from you too. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for joining us today. And we'll be glad to see you next week. When we heard our Rivian wouldn't be delivered until Christmas of 2023, we decided to see what we could tow with our Chevy Bolt. Launching our solar electric trailer journey. We have a lot to learn and we're sharing what we discover along the way. We've added solar panels to our A-Liner Scout pop-up trailer. Preparing us for doing the same on a bigger trailer when the Rivian arrives. Join us by subscribing now.